So today I want to take a few minutes here and talk about how to properly dimple for a set screw gas block on an AR-15, LR-308, AR-10 type firearm. This is just going to be talking about the dimpling procedure, how to do it, how to do it properly, what type of locking compounds and stuff I use and don't use, um, how to do the alignment and all that jazz. I'm going to try and keep this short and sweet. Talk about the jigs, bits, gas block and all that stuff, uh, but mainly focusing on the dimpling aspect itself. So uh, why is dimpling a barrel for a set screw gas block important? Well, first and foremost for integrity, but also for proper alignment, which is going to facilitate proper function. We don't want things like premature wear on some components. We don't want function issues to run into uh, those types of problems or the gas block itself coming loose uh, and having that aligned properly is extremely important. This is one of the, the big components to the firearm itself actually functioning properly and uh, not running into any types of malfunctions and stuff like that down the road. So let's get into it. So first things first, a couple things you're gonna need. Obviously your barrel and upper receiver, you could do this really simply with just the barrel. You don't really need any other components. I actually have this installed on a Geisley reaction rod in the vise right now, but you can put this in the vise using your jig. Uh, the jig is very important when it comes to getting the dimples and everything lined up properly. I'm gonna talk about the he here more in a second. Uh, the proper bit, I am using a Bosch 532nd inch cobalt bit. I've heard guys running into problems where they have a bit that just won't cut through the barrel material, whether it's like this nitrided 4150 chrome molly bandium or, you know, a 416R stainless or something like that. Uh, but what I found is these cobalt bits work great. This is recommended to me by someone uh, a year or two ago, and I've been using it ever since, and it works awesome. So I will put a link, uh, like an Amazon affiliate type link to this and pretty much anything else I can link to below. Uh, on YouTube, which isn't a lot, but give this bit a look. Again, 530 seconds Bosch Cobalt bit. I, the brand doesn't really matter, but as long as it's Cobalt, you should be good to go. Uh, gas block itself, it's important to make sure that the gas block is the correct diameter to the gas block journal in the barrel. This one happens to be 0.875, which is kind of an odd uh, diameter barrel, but uh, you don't see those as much as you see like the 0.75s or the 0.936s. Um, but with that said, it doesn't really matter. As long as you have the proper size gas block to your gas block journal, you should be good to go. I like to start off first by just verifying that the gas block is the proper size. You probably just want to back out those screws a little bit there to make sure that they're not going to drag on the barrel when you're going through. Um, I always install the gas tube before I do the gas block install. You can do it after uh, technically, but I like to do it first. Um, I've actually cleaned this out a bit and made sure this fits already. Um, I did it before I put the, the gas tube on, but I just want to make sure that again, we have the proper size gas block Per, uh, per your barrel's gas block journal. Now these gas blocks are gonna vary in how snug they fit based on manufacturer. Some of them fit very, very snug. Some of them fit very loose. I would say that this one is somewhere in between and it's about, about exactly where I like it. It's not too snug, but it's not loose. It's going on and it fits really well. Uh, if it does fit really snug, you may just wanna take like a shop cloth or one of those blue shop rags and spray this down with some oil or some light oil and just clean this off. These barrels usually come with some sort of light grease on them just to keep things from rusting or corroding in storage. Same goes for the gas blocks. So take take something in there and clean this out with a bit of uh, oil, let it evaporate, and then that should free things up a little bit. You may have to even, if it's really, really bad, take a little bit of light, light paper or sandpaper in there, um, remove a bit of material. But I, I don't like doing that if I don't have to. So just keep that in mind. You may have to get out like a little brass or Delrin tip hammer like this brown nails hammer I have and give it a little little tap on really just want to make sure it's going to fit um don't get so far on that you're not going to get the thing off but uh, I think if you got this gotten to this point you're kind of aware of some of these issues already one last thing I'll talk about here before we get into the drilling aspect of this and this is something you can test out before you even install your gas tube as I have here uh, you can slide this gas block onto the barrel and look at that rearmost screw hole uh, in relation to the gas port and you can actually turn this gas block completely upside down and see where that screw hole lines up with the port because these this port and this screw hole for the gas block directly correlate they're right on top of one another so these are going to line up so not all the time a lot of people think you want to push this straight to the shoulder you know they're trying to do this install without doing a dimple or they're just trying to do their alignment for whatever reason based off of this and that's not always the case in fact as you can see here that's a little bit too far to the rear so this one is going to index a bit off the shoulder uh, maybe just a hair about that much by the time we're done you see that those that hole in that port line up. So just because there's a shoulder there, 
don't always push it to that shoulder and just assume that that's how it lines up because that's not always the case. In fact, a lot of the times I would say that's not going to be the case. So this is again, one of the reasons why it's important to do the dimple or dimples because not only are they securing the gas block itself from going anywhere, but they are uh, assuring proper alignment, which is very, very important. There are a few different jigs out there. So just do a, a search for the jig uh, or an AR-15 dimpling, barreling jig, all stuff like that. Uh, these are something that you're really gonna want. Um, you may not wanna go out and buy one of these if you're just looking at building one AR. Maybe you have a buddy you can reach out to. Maybe you can pay someone to do the dimpling part. Uh, it's really up to you. Uh, this is a 0.875, again, kind of an oddball size. I have a 0.750 and a 0.625 uh, in my uh, toolbox here. The only one I don't have right now is a 0.936. So anyway, they're about 30 to 40 bucks. Uh, if you're into building AR, it's definitely worth the investment. So what we have here is essentially just like a jig that's gonna fit on the end of the barrel. We're going to, uh, I'm actually gonna flip this around. Actually, we'll start this way. I'm gonna start this way anyway. Uh, slide this on, you'll see that it indexes properly with the uh, gas block journal. Um, we're gonna make sure that all this stuff is lined up properly. So this piece right here, remove it here so you can see, is kind of tapered. And that's going to screw into the gas port hole. It's gonna kind of self align when you screw it in there. Uh, and then on the other side, let me just kind of get this on there. I'm gonna do this off camera, it's a bit easier. Uh, we'll flip it back over once that is screwed down. Uh, and then this piece right here, will line up directly on the opposite side, right underneath the gas port. And this is going to allow us to insert a drill bit through and get that, that hole screwed in or that hole uh, dimpled. So uh, another thing I'll note here, you'll see there's a bunch of different holes on these, at least on this model. I like these a lot. So you'll see they're labeled here. This is the, the distance these holes are apart from each other. You see 0 0.450, 0 0.425, etc. These gas blocks vary the distance of these screws vary from gas block to gas block. So depending on the kind you have, um, they may be a little bit stretched out or spread out further than, than others. So that's something to also keep in mind. Uh, if you're not sure what gas block you're going to use, you probably just want to do one dimple. And if that's the case, you always want to do the dimple below the gas port. You never want to do the one in front of it. So just do the one below the gas port. Uh, in fact, I would say that if you ever plan on uh, switching to a gas block down the road that is maybe adjustable, or maybe you're not 100% sure that you're going to keep said gas block on the gun, you definitely want to just drill one. You don't want to end up with a hole, with two holes, and then later you switch out or you get a gas block and they don't align properly. Uh, and then you have to drill another hole and it's going to be a, a weird alignment. It's probably not going to work well. So for this case, for that reason, this is not my build. Um, I think being that this is a 450 Bushmaster down the road, this user may want to go to an adjustable. This is a, a fixed gas block here. We're just going to do the one for today. So I'm starting on the top side of the barrel here and I have that tapered screw. It's just starting to index on that gas port hole. I'm going to kind of shimmy it a bit front to rear, side to side as I snug this down. And we're just going to give it a nice little snug torque there so it's not going anywhere. Flip it back over and now this will be in line properly with the opposite uh, side of that gas port. We can start our drilling. Give me the bottom side a little bit of a snug twist there and we're good to go. I usually do put like one drop of oil down in there. I'm not really sure if it's necessary, but I like to have a little bit of lubrication in there. And now we can kind of get our, our bit going. And that looks pretty good from here. So we're going to go ahead and remove that jig. Another reason why I like the reaction rod, nice and easy just to spin around. This does have flat bits on the side here though, so you can technically clamp it in if you need to. I feel like the older versions of this were a, a bit better at that, but this one works just fine anyway. And then this is the top portion of the barrel. This is what indexed on the gas port itself. Take this off a little bit. Take this off a little bit. And you'll see there's obviously no damage to the top of the gas port. All we're doing is screwing a nice little tapered screw in there. And then on the back side, you've got a nice little dimple there, as you guys can tell. So uh, you don't want to go super deep, but again, you don't want to go too shallow. It's kind of funny. There are some manufacturers who will pre-dimple these for you and send them out. And I've, I've dealt with a handful of uh, pre-dimpled barrels. And I like that most companies nowadays are 
not most, I should say, but a lot of companies now are pre-dimpling barrels for sets for gas blocks like this because they're very common. But a lot of them I find are just not doing it wide enough or deep enough for these uh, these types of set screw gas blocks. So for that reason, I end up redoing them a lot of the time. Uh, but some of them are okay. Just keep in mind, you don't want it too shallow, you don't want it too narrow, and that's that's something I've kind of ran into with some manufacturers uh, in the past year or so. Moving on to the gas block install, might as well turn this into a complete gas block install vid here quick. Um, I will note again, as I mentioned before, we are just doing one set screw here, or one, not one set screw, but one dimple. Uh, if you do have a permanent install where you know you're never gonna change that gas block and you can do two dimples, I say go for it. In fact, I would recommend it. But in this case, we're just gonna do the one and it should be perfectly fine. So uh, spinning this upper receiver back over, we're just going to uh, slide on the gas block. I've already indexed the barrel nut. Again, we're not gonna talk about that here, but we're good to go. Uh, that is a BAR type barrel nut from uh, Arrow. Um, and this barrel is a Faxon 16-inch 450 Bushmaster. Um, and we're going to, again, index the gas block and the set screw on the dimple we drilled because that is the proper alignment. So as you can see here from the bottom side, as we slide this on, it lines up. And as I was mentioning earlier, you don't necessarily always want these right up against the shoulder. In fact, you can see that's not correct. So it's got to come out just a hair about right there. We're going to start that first screw right here uh, in here, and it's going to kind of self align. Now, locking compounds are one of those things that are still kind of hotly debated between a lot of different groups today. Uh, bottom line is yes, you absolutely want to use some locking compound. Pretty much everything on an AR 15 with threads gets locking compound. The only thing that really doesn't is gonna be like your barrel nut threads uh, and your like your buffer uh, buffer tube threads. Uh, other than that, pretty much everything with threads on an AR gets some type of locking compound. We wanna make sure that that stuff does not come out when it shouldn't. Uh, so what we have here is I got some Loctite 271 red, uh, I got some rock set, and this is just like a typical like blue uh, kind of locking compound right here. It's like a, a Loctite, but it's the gel stuff. So first and foremost, I'm gonna get rid of this. I don't want that. I just brought that in for demonstration purposes. Um, the Typically the blue Loctites don't have a high enough um, uh, heat threshold. We don't really wanna use those because these gas blocks and barrels can get hot, especially when running suppressed. So that leaves us with two things here. We have a high temp red Loctite and then we have a rock set. Uh, there are different types of high temp red Loctite. Uh, there's like a 271, 272, uh, I want to say like the 6, is it the 620? I can't remember the actual number, but 271 and 272 are the most common high temp reds. I believe most companies that are using high temp red Loctite are using 271, but do not quote me on that. Some of these companies don't want to disclose the stuff that they're using uh, for obvious reasons there. So uh, red is definitely more of a permanent install. The heat rating is not as high as something like Rock Set, but it is a bit stronger in my opinion, in my experience. Uh, and it is, uh, again, more of a permanent type install. So if you ever need to service a gun that has something like this on it, you're probably gonna have to get the torch out. And I've had to do it before and it's not fun. So uh, just keep that in mind. It is more of a permanent install. The rock set, the big advantage to this stuff here is it, it, my understanding is it's like a ceramic based uh, locking compound. The heat uh, rating on this is extremely high. We're talking, I wanna say like thousands of degrees or a thousand plus degrees. You're never gonna get this stuff hot enough to uh, degrade it. So that's kind of a nice thing if you are shooting a lot of suppressed fire uh, or you do get these things hot you, and you need something that's gonna hold, uh, Rock Set is definitely has the higher heat rating. Uh, also thing as I've noticed is again, it's not as strong as this. I would put it somewhere between like a medium and uh, like a, a heavy duty type locking compound. Uh, again, not quite as strong as the, the red, but I believe it is stronger than the blue in my experience. Uh, I've had, there are some horror stories about guys trying to remove this stuff, which can be good, can be bad. Uh, it is said to be water soluble, but a couple notes I'll make. Number one, again, if you ever have to remove this stuff, the heat rating is way too high. You're not going to get it off with heat. Uh, two, water soluble. Some guys have said to soak your gas block, soak your muzzle device in water for a couple hours or overnight. I've done that. It doesn't really work. Uh, so while this may be water soluble, in my experience, soaking this has had zero effect whatsoever which in my opinion is good because if I drop, get, you know, if I get this stuff wet, I don't want it to degrade. Uh, what I have found that works, and you say, well, you know, how can I get this off? Uh, direct shock is how I get this stuff removed. Now, what I'm talking about there is taking like a brass or Delrin or nylon tipped hammer. Uh, I would say this size or bigger. And in the case of a gas block, I use the brass side and I would apply some direct shock right above the areas where this stuff has been used. In this case, there's two set screws. So I'll give it a good two or three whacks 
right above each screw and that kind of shocks it enough to kind of break it loose enough that I'm able to actually get it removed. Um, and it's not as, as horrible uh, to remove as say not doing that or using the, the high temp red. So that's my suggestion. The rock set is definitely more serviceable, but at the same time, in my opinion, I believe it is more than sturdy enough for pretty much all applications. So I defer to rock set almost all the time. So what I typically do here is get that aligned right there and I will start this first screw, making sure the gas block doesn't really go anywhere without any locking compound on it. And I just wanna make sure that it's going to go down, it's going to index in that dimple that we just made properly. Just a little bit of movement there, which is good. And then I screw it down like that, give it a nice solid torque. And then what I do, is I pull this screw out and I'll put a dab of rock set on this screw. And we're talking just like a drop. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's just a drop. I'm just gonna let it walk around the threads kind of on its own. I may even take a little bit off with my finger here. I don't want it overflowing too bad. I don't want it seeping down below the gas block itself. Uh, the first screw I just screwed in is holding these in place. I'm already bottoming it out. You'll see that this screw is gonna sit a little higher than the screw. Again, that's normal because we didn't dimple for this one. Not a problem. Let me give that a little bit of a snug twist there. And again, now that, that screw is holding it in place where I remove the first one that I haven't put locking compound on yet. And then I'm just gonna double check my alignment. And everything looks great. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put a bit more rock set on this screw. Again, just drop. We're gonna install this one and snug it down and we should be all set. All right, so got that second one screwed down. I'm gonna take a Little paper towel here, wipe this locking compound off the top. You know, I don't want any working down in the screws. And uh, if I ever had to service this or remove it, I don't want that, that locking compound blocking my Allen key uh, getting down in there, but we should be good to go. So uh, a lot of guys will ask, what's the torque spec on something like this? Most manufacturers, and I would say defer to the, the gas block manufacturer there. Uh, some of them will give you a torque spec. Um, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's gonna usually be between 20 to 25 inch pounds, and that's, for my understanding, just a, uh, a typical type torque spec for this size and threading of a screw. Uh, given my experience though, these screws are pretty darn tough. And uh, again, having disassembled that BCM upper receiver I talked about earlier uh, that required the torch, these screws are tougher than your Allen wrench. So you will break an Allen wrench before you strip out these screws, assuming your wrench is seated properly as it should be. Um, so you're gonna break that before you ruin the threads or ruin these Allen key heads. So with that said, uh, what I like to typically do is get them installed, use the long side here, and just give them a really good torque in. Again, I don't want these going anywhere almost to the point where the Allen wrench starts to bend. Basically what I'm doing is torquing them about as tight as I can personally go without um, without hurting the wrench or anything like that. Um, and I find that that's pretty darn good when it comes to keeping them very, very tight. Um, again, it's probably above that 25 inch pound torque spec. In fact, I know it is, um, but at the same time, they are still serviceable. And with that said, these torque down, rock set applied properly after we did the proper dimpling. We are pretty much all good to go. I already installed the gas tube, as I mentioned earlier. We are pretty much all set. And now I know that this is a rock solid install. I know that the alignment on this is proper because we did the dimple alignment to the gas port in the barrel. Um, and everything is all set. We're all good to go. We're not gonna run into any type of premature wear on any of the components. We're not gonna run into any alignment issues and stuff like that. And this gas block is not going anywhere. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, there are a lot of ways to do this stuff. There's other videos out there on how to do this. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. Um, if you have questions, I'd say just reach out and let me know. Uh, talk to your local armors, local gunsmiths and stuff like that. Um, there are other ways to install gas blocks like clamp on and, and pin on. I'm not gonna talk about those in this video here. Um, but yeah, if you got anything else, let me know. Uh, if you're not doing a gas block install this way, the fact of the matter is uh, it's really not being done properly. Um, you know, and you may say, hey, I've got, uh, you know, a thousand rounds through my gun that I, that I just didn't dimple at all. I just installed myself. Um, you know, a thousand rounds isn't that much. You could say, hey, I've got 5,000 rounds, you got 10,000 rounds. You know, hey, maybe you do, that's fine. Uh, but the bottom line is you're cutting corners to save money um, and you don't have the proper install, nor is it going to be as solid or as tough as an install like this. So uh, do the right thing. If you're building enough ARs, 
spend the money, spend the $30, $40 you need to to get a jig like this or something of that nature and get it done right uh, because it's your investment. You owe it to yourself to get it done right. So check you guys later.